smat ut nih pipayanta dyu bhaktah paravatah somatim bhikshamana visindhavah samaya sasru sasruh adrim the milk cows of the truth enjoyed in heaven full added desiring us have fed us with their milk praying for the right thinking from the beyond the rivers flowed wide um, over the mountain mountain capital m that adri the infinite rock over shibindu says over it could be also through v uh, own kind of covering or breaking through the mountain the luminous nourishes of the truth eager and willing with full others feed us sharing heavenly light Bhakta, that's my translation and asking for or aspiring to or wanting to share bhikshamana the perfect mind sumatim from the beyond paravata the rivers flew wide sindhavach sisru oh sorry sasru over or through vi adrim the rock of inconscient um, so ritasya of the dynamic truth indeed he the henavach the feeding or the nourishing cows vava shana shibindu translates as desiring um from vash it can be also translated as um, um what do you call it what cows are doing mooing <laughs> moo doing bellowing what do they do in english most probably uh, he will translate swelled with little and other the cows holy long loudly lowing yeah mm. so that's a moo, moo doing huh? calling but it vash also has the meaning of wanting desiring um aspiring um, maybe something um not aspiring but um, eager and willing this is how i translate shabindo puts it as desiring us there is no us but it is kind of implied whom else would they desire so the feeding cows of the truth of the dynamic truth willing or wishing uh, eager uh, sumat together or full of um other full of milk pipayantah a feeding uh um shared by heaven or can be translated whose sharing is heaven or can be translated also as um enjoyed in heaven Shubindra puts first enjoyed in heaven and gives the footnote shared by heaven and also because it is a uh, Bahuvrihi compound we can see it by well it is not Bahuvrihi compound yeah then it is most probably that maybe my translation is wrong then I thought it was Bahuvrihi compound by accent Yes, it is du bhakta. So it is bahuvri compound. That means whose sharing is heaven. Yeah, one can translate in that way. So they share the heaven, or they are shared in heaven. And sharing has this uh, sense of enjoyment. Yeah, in the word bhikshamana we see it because bhikshamana bhiksha is the desire desirative of root bhaj to share so to say desiring to share and bhikshu 
as we know in India, bhikshus are those who are usually translated as beggars. They are not beggars. They are those who want to share with you <laughs> your wealth. They come to you to share with you what you have, and they will give you what they have. They have their blessings, their spiritual, you know, status or spiritual presence. They can uh, bestow upon you, and you have some material things which they need. You know? So you can give them some money or some food, and they will bestow on you their blessings. And this is Bhikshu. Bhikshu is the one who wants to share, you know? wants to enjoy together you know, the manifestation. This is an interesting concept in India. So bhikshus are saints, they are not beggars, as it is in, in the Western tradition. Yeah? Beggars are some kind of lower kind, but these are the highest possible bhikshus. So bhikshamana, desiring to share, paravatak sumatim, the perfect mind from the beyond, and they flow up over the Adri, infinite rock, together. Now these rivers are those rivers which broke the Vala, the, the subconscious cave, yes? It is them with their streams. These are the streams of heaven or the inspirations, or what do you call them? The, um, the muses, yes? Muses which bring a force of consciousness which changes everything, shows everything in its right place. So this, these currents or streams of consciousness are always invited or aspired for by the rishis. And by the poets, rishis are the poets, yes? They, they are inspiring for the muse to come. When muse comes, they can express the truth. And muse is not there. And these muses are interesting. They are seen as currents. It's like a current of energy which uh, leaps out from heaven to our state, where we are, yes, and connects us uh, to the heavenly higher state of consciousness. So we being here below, we are connected to something which is much above. And that's what they do. That's why they are called also portals or doors, the divine doors to the to heaven. So they are streams, currents, and portals to heaven. And they are needed. They are needed to destroy the Vala, to release the hidden treasures yes, in the subconscious cave. That's what they do. So they hit upon this Adri the infinite rock, infinite in conscience. It's like a hard basis at, at the bottom of things, yeah? the darkest um, in conscience. So, Tuve Agne Sumatim Bhikshamana, again Bhikshamana, desiring to share and desiring to enjoy together. To ve agne somatim bhikshamana divi shravo dadhire yajniyasah naktacha chakruh ushasa virupe krishnam chavarnam arunam cha sandhu. O fire, in thee praying for the right thinking, for Sumati, and we will come to Sumati again, it's what, twice already, big shamanam, desiring to enjoy the Sumati, the perfect thinking, the right thinking. The masters of sacrifice, Yajniyasah, set inspired knowledge in heaven, Divi Shrabach Dadhire. They made night and dawn of different forms, Naktacha, Ushasa, Chakru, they made Virupe of different forms, Krishnamcha, 
and join together the black and the rosy hue. Krishnamcha Varnam Arunamcha Sandho. Very simple language, actually. But complex thought in you indeed o agni seeking to enjoy or to realize or to share the perfect thought the right thinking should um long ago i wrote the whole article on sumati anumati and pramati these three are used in the veda constantly and they have their own connotations of using Sumati is an interesting word. It's something like what Shirobindo calls the mind of light. It is the mind which is already transformed by higher consciousness and becomes luminous and becomes it's a realization in the mental consciousness of the spirit. So they want that realization because it is already changing the the whole life of man. I, in previous thinking, I was having different idea of Sumati. Sumati for me was the realization of the supermind in the mental consciousness. Yeah. And it's very close to that mind of light, yeah, which Sri Aurobindo says about. Very close, but uh, maybe not totally kind of true what I thought. So I thought that pramati is moving forward with thought is like um, aspiring. Anumati is like sanctioning, like grace descending. Anumati is like a sanction. And sumati is the result where pramati and anumati are joining together. We have sections where it is very clear in the Veda. Pramati, anumati and sumati. And all of them, Mati from Rutman, thought. So, Pramati is thinking forward, looking forward, aspiring. Anumati accordingly thinking, so to say, or answering. Anumati is considered to be the grace, usually. And finally, Sumati, perfect union of the call and the answer. So we want that realization where the heaven and earth are joining their forces. Yeah? Uh, the call from below and the answer from above. They can accomplish all, the, all we are looking for. And that is the aim of the sacrifice. So Sumati has a very loaded meaning in the Veda. So begging or wanting uh, aspiring for this sumati in you or agni they the most effective in the sacrifice established the inspired knowledge shravas or glory in heaven uh, shubindu says set inspired knowledge in heaven yes I, I add your glory, established your glory or agni of inspired and comprehensive knowledge in heaven. It's uh, why I say yours, because um, if there is an aspiration from agni, agni is an aspiration, and that aspiration has to be, has to reach the heaven for sumati to, to become effective. So if that Shravas is established of his glory, his inspired knowledge in heaven, then means, that means that we joined heaven and earth. So for that, they established the inspired knowledge in heaven, for, for connecting heaven and earth and making Sumati possible. And again, interestingly, this duality continues. Naktacha chakruh ushasavi rupe. And by that, they created two night and dawn of different form. And Krishnam chavarnam arunam chasamdhuh. And mixed them together. Again, this mixing 
the light of the spirit and the darkness, yes, or aditi and diti, uh, the uniting and separating consciousness into one. This mixture creates actually the sacrifice. So this is some the structure. These two dawns, we have the whole, we had the whole section uh, on them. I translated all the hints to the dawn. They are the most luminous, the most beautiful from the poetic point of view. And um, all the time the dawn is mentioned with her twin sister, Nakta, night. Yeah? And uh, so they share the same space and they come to that space in the orderly fashion. So one vacates the space for the other sister, and that sister vacates the same space for the other sister. They are different in form, but with the same intention. So they are feeding the growth of fire here, of Agni. They are two mothers of Agni. Agni grows by both of them by the light and by the night. Um, this alternation of them is also understood as that the path of integral yoga, as Sri describes. We are rising higher, we are diving deeper, and we take more of the darkness to the light. So this is our purpose. Our purpose is to take more and more darkness to the light and transform it by the light. This is how dynamically we are living and why we have all the hardships always and they are never leaving us <laughs> and will never leave us bad news for us because until they, we are done with them, they will be there for us to work with them. So we have to learn to welcome them <laughs> uh, and offer them to the light. Then, number eight. Yan raye martan sushudo agne te. Okay. Yan raye martan. Yan raye martan sushudo agne te siyama maghavano vayamcha. I have to deconstruct this a bit to make the poetic rhythm. So instead of siyama, I say siyama. Yeah? Te siyama maghavano vayamcha chayeva vishvam bhuvanam sisakshi apaprivan rodasi antariksham. The mortals whom thou speedest to the treasure, may we be of them, the lords of riches and we. Filling earth and heaven and mid-air, thou clingest to the whole world like a shadow. Now the word shadow translation is not totally correct. Hmm. It is shadow, but it is also a projection. It can be a luminous shadow, if you can just imagine that. It is something which is being projected from the original you know, being. It's something which is being extended, projected. So in that sense, it's like, a, it's like type and prototype, yes? So it's something it has the original and has the reflection. Reflection is a good word. Yeah? Projection, reflection, and shadow. Um, shadow, we imagine always a darkness, yeah? some kind of. But it is not necessarily. It's some kind of um, an emanation huh? or different formulation. Or, for example, Chaya. Saturn is Chaya of the sun. Yeah? He is known Shani as the. So, and it's interesting because if you look at Saturn with his rings, uh, I saw the whole program on Saturn from uh, 
scientific program and they say that it is a replica of the solar system so it is chaya it's actually a projection of the solar system in the miniature is somewhere with those rings which are not yet formed into the planets so it is like a like a kind of a projection of the solar system into smaller solar system to conclude it there like a like a shadow of it as it were the final fence of all the what is happening within the solar home uh, so in that sense it is a replica of the uh, the formation or the reproduction let us say reproduction of the original so chaya is not only the shadow but also as a projection or emanation or constant following the original and constantly following so chayeva as if a chaya vishvam bhuvanam sisakshi you follow the whole world you cannot just get rid of the world you are a part of the world apaprivan the filling roda see heaven and earth and antariksham and the space between heaven and earth those mortals whom you prepare for the luminous wealth or agni may we be of them of them and the masters of the greatness reaches and we this is something interesting here because and we this end not we as the masters of the greatness or riches or but the masters of the riches and we may we be them the masters of a, the greatness and we how would you interpret this there is something interesting here most probably Some sorts, yeah. I think uh, they always talk of uh, the other rishis participating in the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So we are we we are part of them, or they lead and we follow something like that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I also think this is something close to that. Yes, right. There's someone always there who realized already the ideal. And uh, we who didn't realize the ideals. And, and maybe these two are part of ourselves. There's someone in us, in ourselves even, who realized the ideal. And someone in us who didn't. Maybe. So, Vladimir, you're saying that, you know, a part of the consciousness has realized and then part of, is, is still in ignorance? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah. we have this dual nature. This uh, soul in us, the psychic who knows the truth. There is a jivatma in us who is the truth. <laughs> and uh, there is so much in us which is not of the truth yet not aware of it our mental bite on physical nature yeah, needs uh, transformation needs the work on them it is also very close to the ideals of the of the veda what is to, to sacrifice sacrifice is this yeah? we sacrifice part of ourselves which which is to be changed, which is to be divinized into the part in us which is divine. And this interaction between the two is the whole process of transformation. Here also it yeah? also it gives us also it gives a sense of collective effort, no, that it is not really mm -hmm. uh, so much of an individual effort as there is a group or a clan of people who are aspiring together. Yeah, it's a very good point. You see, they do not say who they are. They do not really make them and we. 
though it sounds like Maghavana, the great ones who possess the riches, and we. So we here are in the position who are not yet possessing the riches. But that's all what is being said. There is nothing, nothing more. There is no specification who are these and who are them and who are we. Some kind of they are going in one go together. And the beginning is interesting. Yan ra ye martan sushudo agne. So those mortals, why mortals are mentioned, yeah? Interesting, because the part of mortality in us, whom you speed up towards the riches, towards raich, luminous spiritual riches or agni, they may we be. So may you, Agni, take part of us, yes, which is not regenerated yet, and speed it up towards that uh, wealth, realization of the spirit, ra ye, towards the luminous reaches. And then Maghavano Vayamcha. We, uh, so it's like kind of two parts in us who are we are not yet changed and we who already possess the truth to a certain extent. Yeah, it's uh, because of this vast uh, approach to knowledge in the Veda and this cryptic way of speaking, it has the depth which uh, if we are not looking for it, we will not see it. All translations will be given in a very primitive way. Some kind of masters, some rich man and we. That's it. But knowing from Sri Aurobindo that it is of most spiritual content, we can dig a little bit into that direction and find. So he follows like a shadow all the world, all the becomings. And because of that, he can speed up our beings, which are not re regenerated towards the wealth, filling heaven and earth and space in between. This feeling is important. All these are the functional terms of the Vedic uh, yoga, yoga of the Vedic rishis. These are the functional phrases. They do something to our consciousness, which if we combine these meanings, we will get a new meaning or new sense of what is being done or wanted to be done. What is our aspiration about? Okay, number nine. Arvad bhih agne arvato nri bhih nrin virai chaviran vanuyama tuvota ishana sah pitrivitas yarayo vi surayah Shatahimano Ashyuch. Here the same repetition will be of the same idea and difficulty to translate. O fire, safeguarded by thee, may we conquer the war horses by our war horses, the strong men by our strong men, the heroes by our heroes. May our illumined wise ones become masters of the treasure gained by the fathers, that very treasure which, which is the secret of the Veda, and possess them living a hundred winters. Again, we have a new word. Instead of Maghavanach, we have Surayach, Suri. These are also luminous beings, like Maghavana, possessing the Magha, the greatness, or the wealth. Maghavana is also translated as generous. But, yeah, of, in the later literature. 
So who are these Arvat? Arvat is the courser or the racing horse, yes? The horse which is racing towards the prize, to gain the prize. It is that speed in, in our nature, in our vitality, in our mentality. It is the vital energy in the mind which speeds up like like speed is very important it seems for the spiritual vision of the Veda um, because without speed it will go slow <laughs> we need to go faster so with Arvadbi with our courses or Agni Arvato the the courses Nribhi with our heroic souls, the heroic powers of the soul, Nrin, the heroic powers of the soul, Virach, by the heroes, vi, the heroes, Vanuyama, may we conquer, or may we win, there is another word, win, Van and win, it's very closely related, Tuvota, supported by you, Tva Utah, it's a typical Vedic word. You will not find this word in the classical Sanskrit. So supported by you, O Agni, with your filling our heaven and earth and space in between, filling our mental, vital and physical consciousness, may we get to those real courses, the real speedy ones, with our speedy ones, energies, with our heroic souls, powers of the soul get new heroic powers of the soul with our uh, heroes who are ready to face the darkness we get greater heroes so to say conquering the darkness so it reminds me of the same idea that only by brahman you can realize brahman you know? uh, you cannot uh, get to the goal or to the aim by the means which are not from that goal or aim. This is a dialectical law. <laughs> you cannot arrive at good by doing bad. Yeah? Doesn't work that way. You have to do already good. And smaller, smaller good becomes greater good. And that's how you arrive at the good. And so the same here. By the Arvat Bihih, you have to arrive at the Arvatah. And by the Nribhih to the Nrin, by the Virah to the Vir. That makes totally sense. It is actually the description of all sadhana, of yogic sadhana. So how can we really arrive at greater being if we are not using the, those uh, constituents of that great being already? The yoga is done by the divine in us. So those elements of the divine are being activated to get more and more of those elements or the, those qualities. How can we become more sincere if we are not sincere a little bit <laughs> it is not possible so it is something which is difficult to get for our mind we think that because of our spatial thinking of the world yes we think that by this means we get that result which is different from the means it's not really the way it is the same extended in time uh, quality so Ishanasah and possessing Pitri, Pitri, they are our forefathers, Vitasya Rayah, possessing the luminous wealth found by the fathers, forefathers, by those ancestors, first Rishis, Pitris, Angirasa Rishis, possessing, yes, the, it, Visurayah the luminous wise ones uh, should enjoy hundred winters so i will read my interpretation 
May we win swift forces by our swift forces, the powers of the soul by the powers of the soul, and the heroes by our heroes. And possessing the wealth that was acquired by our forefathers, may our luminous masters, which is similar to Yajamana, Suri is also Yajamana, our souls, enjoy the life of hundred years. And I believe that it could be the, actually, it could be also not necessarily the soul per se, but that gen regenerated part of ourselves, which is already, which carries the divine imprint, yes, which we consider to be ourselves, yeah? the best in us, Suri. This word is used constantly and nobody knows what it means. Usually people translate them as, you know, uh, those rich sacrifices, those who make, who are rich people and do great offerings. But that is in the cultural context. Yeah? So who are those rich uh, Yajamanas? <laughs> These are our souls. Only they can really offer richly. Nobody else can richly offer. <laughs> they are misers on the way. The mind is a miser, vital is total miser, and body also is and trying to you know, to keep up with itself. It doesn't give itself easily. Only soul can do it. Soul can give everything to the divine. If it would be its will, if it would come to the front, it would do it. But since we are kind of ruled by other members of the kingdom, so they don't give easily themselves to the divine. They kind of preserve themselves for themselves. <laughs> Let me enjoy a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> for today, tomorrow I will do it. From tomorrow, I will start my sadhana. <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning, I will meditate. I will do pranayama. I promise, I am tired already of doing this. <laughs> Not doing this. <laughs> this is every day. <laughs> every day talking to oneself. The same story. <laughs> You're already tired of listening to it. <laughs> again and again and again but because the inner being wants to be realized and it doesn't give up and will never give up so whatever you do you will have to do it sooner or later i just added a little bit personal stuff to it my morning shower thoughts <laughs> all right and now, the last verse. You see, we did five verses today. <laughs> Kinshuk noticed that, and so we did kind of concentrate. And from now on, we will be concentrated on the Veda more. Etate agne uchatani vedho jushtani santo manase hridecha shake marayah sudhuro yamam te Adhishravo Deva Bhaktam Dadhanach. O ordainer of things, O fire, may these utterances be acceptable to thee. This the whole hymn which was read before. To the mind and to the heart, may we have strength to control with firm yoke thy riches, thy spiritual riches plenitude of his presence in the being holding in thee the inspired knowledge enjoyed by the gods may these hymns for you o agni o creator be acceptable to your mind and heart may we be able to bear your luminous riches establishing above 
the glory enjoyed by gods. Eta uchatani, etani uchatani te. These expressions, these hymns for you, O Agni, Vedhas, the ordainer. Jushtani Santo, may they be gladly accepted or happily accepted. Manase Hridecha, for mind and heart. And it is not said for, for your mind and heart, but interestingly, for mind and heart stands by itself. Hmm? To the mind and to the heart, Shabindu puts it over coma. So it could be to the mind and heart of every one of us, yes? In the most divine kind of formulation. Shakema, may we be able, from Ruchak Shakti, may we be able, Sudhurach, be holders, perfect holders of the, how to put it, may we be able to bear your luminous riches, Yamam is the control I put here for you. You can see Yama, rain, curb, br bridle, drive a chariot here, an act of checking or curbing, suppression, restrain. So may we be in the holders of a perfect control of the reaches your reaches, te, adhi shrabach, and be above adhi, the glory or the, the comprehensive cognition, deva bhaktam, shared by the gods, tadhana, establish or hold on to. Could be we should be uh, holding on to the comprehensive knowledge shared among the gods or enjoyed among the gods. It's an interesting word, very powerful, shravas. Shruti shravas. You know, we do not totally understand the, the implications of this word. Shruti is a revelation. It's translated as the inspirational knowledge yeah, which came from above. It was not created. It is like those rivers, yeah, like those muses. They brought this, this rhythm, these chandas, these poetic formations which are eternal. They are in the highest heaven. Those formulations of the meanings. Interestingly, that Shru is contact, connected with hearing. And this hearing is something to do with comprehension or recognizing the meaningful relations in oneness. So this knowledge of oneness, of meaningful oneness, the inspired knowledge, which is shared by all divine forces in heaven, yeah, we hold on to, or we establish within us or above. If you read other translators, you will be surprised how freely they change the meanings of the words and roots also. That Hanak, for example, Yelizarenko translates as given, though it's root dha, which has very little to do with giving. It's more establishing, holding. And, uh, uh, but it doesn't fit to her translation, so she will be saying given by the gods. And yeah, yeah, Griffith is closer laying on the the God sent gift of glory. Again, God sent Deva Bhaktam shared by the God. Yeah? So everybody puts his own uh, into it because so we if we um, examine the words, we will see that there are many possibilities to translate it, yeah? especially in this very general, vast context. So you can fi 
fill in whatever comes to your mind you know, because the grammar allows that but without keys of Sri Aurobindo it becomes something very indifferent okay here we are we have finished with this hymn 10 verses if you have some ideas you want to share some questions please go ahead Can I ask a question, Vladimir? Yes, please. In this last uh, verse where you said that we need the restraint, you know, yama, you said yama. So in that sense, uh, we need yama in our lives. Yeah, but yama is not in that sense, yama is... Um... Lord of yeah, who, who no, not, us. not as the Lord of death, no. but as the restraining control. power. Yeah, control. control. Yama is a control. We have it even in the Yoga Sutras, Yama Niyama. It is actually yes. controlling, controlling mm -hmm. the senses, controlling the behavior, controlling what is to be done and what is not to be done. That control is a must for the sadhana. Yeah? Yes. It will not happen without it. Yes. Thank it, you. It, yeah, yeah. It may happen, but it will be totally, I don't know, the grace. Grace has to kind of break down the person and take him away from all that. Mm -hmm. There yes. are cases where people are not even going into control. They are not really seeking, but the grace takes them and makes them something what, what the divine wants. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. There are artists, musicians of this kind, yeah. They get the highest inspiration, but their life is a mess. Hmm, very true. Thank you. Yeah, but in this case, we are talking about transformation of them, yeah. And in that sense, Yamam is important. Yeah, if you want really to change our nature. It's not enough to rely only on the grace and not following it. We need to follow it. We need to be able to receive that is receptivity, to receive the grace and to hold on to what this grace is about and not to change it into some other form or some other purpose. Yeah? So we aspire for the divine, the divine answers, and we start misusing it for our own egoistic purposes yeah. so this is something we always do and mother speaks about this receptivity is this ability to receive the grace and to use it precisely for the purpose we received it and then the grace will come more and more otherwise it will be kind of a little bit blocked by us yeah. because it doesn't want to come the power doesn't want to come for us to be using it for our egoistic aims, gains. All right. Yes, mother says that we push the grace away ourselves. Yeah. She says every time the grace descends, you push it away yourself. So she must be meaning this only that, uh, you know, we, lack the uh, willpower to restrain we are weak-minded or divided yeah. we are yeah. tempted we are tempted to use the divine freedom light bliss for our egoistic gains because because we lived like this in egoistic framework all the time we mm -hmm. do not know how to really use this currency this gold you know it comes to you, well, how else would you use? Of course, you have to make some profit out of it. So you start making profit out of it. It's just a natural way of misusing the divine grace. It's just what we do all the time. Somebody came to the mother in Auroville and said, look, mother, how much money we abused, misused. Yeah? And she said, look how much consciousness you misused. Yeah. Money is nothing in comparison to how you misuse your consciousness. 
so it is all wasted put somewhere into lower purposes and the grace is trying to really make something out of it and every time it is oh, very rarely that the grace is used exactly for the purpose it comes and we invoke it for that purpose we call it for this you know, we want to transform but when it comes somehow we so easily forget because that moment we assign that kind of higher higher state of consciousness to our own ability we forget that it was the grace it's not we who we are it is the grace <clears throat> and we have to to be grateful You're always grateful and that is what is attracting grace that we recognize what the divine is doing for us and we we give more and more to the divine because of that because of that recognition if you don't recognize if i think that it is me who is so bright and you know clever and so on then then it stops i mean the flood of the grace in kind of becomes veiled or withdraws to the deeper levels yes we don't receive it directly anymore it is still there the divine is never turning away from us but we yes it's me who is great <laughs> it's my greatness <laughs> or i am the greatest instrument of the divine <laughs> You remember somebody told us this story about humility <laughs> when teacher said to the student you have to be humble i want to be the most humble student <laughs> even here you want to be the first <laughs> said the teacher <laughs> this is very funny sometimes mm -hmm. how ego tricks us in yeah? there are so many ways when the path of being is very active and the grace wants to ascend then it's so difficult and what what should one do i mean it's so difficult because it's that that clutch that grip is so strong that it's yeah I, i don't know how to explain this but like part of being is like for example very very active and you feel like two movements and yeah Well, the grace comes from above yes and the aspiration rises from below we are aspiring for the higher but when we aspire for the higher for the sake of our self aggrandizing which is usually many times the case let us say uh, that we want to be more successful that we want to be more happy this to be happy you know thing um to have everything being have to have so even that we can ask the grace will give us yeah the problem is um, what we ask for we have to use it for that has to be the connection if you ask for this and you receive it please use it for that don't use it for something else don't don't start trading it for other things so then grace becomes more and more effective because it 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 comes for this action it does it and it is done so then it comes again and it is done many times we shift the purpose when we receive the grace we do this i do this all the time and i notice it and it is so educational <laughs> to say I was looking for the word frustrating because the lower nature is like this Vladimir I have a question does ascend descend does it have anything to do with the physical loss uh, for example uh, movement water warm water the way it's always up and the cold waters down the air so even our aspiration the effort 
does it coincide with any of these laws physically you mean yeah maybe i never thought of it why the hot war uh, but it is hot still in the room if you go into the uh, open air it is not so it's just opposite the warmer is below and the cold is above yeah so th there's always the movement of this these currents right so in us is that moment the darkness and the light is there something that's happening like yes yeah, so this cold and uh, hot yes and temperature tapas yes tapas the intensity of the of vibration I th you, I think you can make this kind of comparison with the physical world, yes, to a certain extent. The higher frequency of vibration and the lower frequency of vibration, yes. So the higher frequency is closer to the truth, yeah, to the oneness, uh, because it in includes, if I put even like draw it physically it includes more dots in between mm -hmm. <laughs> as the lower vibration it includes less dots in space and time mm -hmm. so if you take for example the time of one year and press it into five minutes can you imagine what will happen or into one second it will explode with energy mm -hmm. because that energy is spread over the time space now if you compress it some well, long ago my sister asked me can you imagine that we will compress uh, our life into all that what we lived through into five minutes what will happen we will flame out there will be pure fire mm -hmm. this fire tapas is redistributed yeah? so the more it is intense the more action of fire is going on some transformation some burning the less the, the the less fire is there that means it is cold so in that sense yes you most probably can compare it's very interesting what you said because i was thinking of it in terms of the the change or realization or body work like if I want to change, like become something in like, say what I was five years back and I, if I look at me now, so it's like if that this would have happened in a shorter time, I wouldn't be able to take it. And same, this also gives me a thought that with other person, if the process can be, I mean, their timelines could be completely different. So like it could be my sister, it could be my father, it could be anybody. And uh, there is no point trying to sort of, sort of like, you have to know this and then this and this. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, if they will have their own time. And you have your, yes, absolutely, your own time is a very good word. Time is the psychological intensity of energy. Yeah? And everybody has his own time frame. Some people live very long and boring life. Others live very short and intense life, yeah? like flaming life. So uh, it's this intensity of psychological time. Time has different dimensions. Yeah? There's cosmic time, there is geological time, uh, you name it, psychological, uh, historical. There are many frame time frames. Yeah? And within this, different intensities. And within you are different intensities. Within one person, there are different time frames we live. We, we, we feel it when we shift from one to another. Yeah? When I shift, oh, I'm still alive, I think. Oh, God, how is that even possible? <laughs> I'm still here in the body. And uh, this is uh, a shift between time frames. This happens. We are not one being within one time frame, not yet. This is so interesting. Oh, God. Mm. Sorry. Thank you, Vladimir. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very, uh, by the way, Gebser speaks about this in his, uh, the ever uh, present origin. And the whole second volume is dedicated to the time. And it starts with eruption of time. 
can you imagine eruption like vulcan <laughs> eruption of time we abused time time is the force yeah and uh, that power has different frameworks and he speaks about this what i'm saying now about different time frames yeah it's an amazing concept yeah what is the name of the book or the they have a present origin john gapser you can order it on amazon i think it is like quite cheap like 20 dollars or something it's published in ohio university it's a very complex book but but very interesting we may study it one time because he is very close to Sri Aurobindo, you know. He wrote his uh, this major work in forties. He didn't know about Sri Aurobindo, and then later he discovered Sri Aurobindo, John Gebser, and uh, he saw the influence of Sri Aurobindo on his writings. He wrote it in the letter. I I recognize the influence of consciousness on my own thoughts. And then he visited uh, Sri Aurobindo Ashram already in 50s, in 56, I think. And then uh, he stayed there for two years uh, with the mother. And he says that the mother embodies the integral structure of consciousness of the future. So it's an interesting fellow. I, I'll just look it up to date, sir, and see if I can get to the we have the whole seminar on one month on Gepsa every, nearly every day. It was like we covered everything. I have all the PowerPoint presentations still somewhere. We may come to them one day if we are interested to know another language because he developed uh, structures of consciousness. And that is quite amazing. It is his, his own, but it is overlapping the Sri Aurobindo's thinking. Maybe this could be like a course in the lag race. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because uh, the whole material is there and it is fascinating. Okay, great. So we stop here for today. Yes, if there are no more questions or remarks, or is there any? I just wanted to ask. I, I think King Shuk was saying something. Sorry. And I was. I just wanted to ask that you had mentioned that uh, Sri Aurobindo is present in the subtle physical uh, but and i mean for mother what what is the like if you see where could you find mother now like what realm of consciousness if i would know i would not tell you <laughs> but uh, yes i don't know sometimes we feel them very close and my mother said like this, she said he built the whole palace, the whole place in the subtle physical, he's there. She was looking for him when he left his body for quite a long time. She couldn't find him months and months and months. And then she found him because he went through the, that Adri, through the rock. He disappeared. He took onto himself the night, which was rising. With that pressure of the supermind, the night was rising and could gobble the whole world. So he made the greatest of the sacrifices. He gave his life to stop the, that rising of the night. That's why he disappeared for months. She couldn't find, she was always in contact with him in subtle body or whatever way. And that time she, he disappeared. And then she found him already established his place in the subtle physical. She was there every night with him from that time on. And she was showing him what they are doing. The Auroville project was shown to him. And, and all, she received all his blessings and all his instructions how to proceed and so on. So they're somewhere there in the subtle world with uh, their disciples around them i hope we will go there <laughs> to they say that they say that there's an inner ashram is that the place yeah it's the place where he lives nice. 
in the subtle physical. It's not even vital. It's closest to the physical. And mother talks about it in mother ag mother's agenda also. Like, and I think I've read some quote yeah. which I don't remember exactly, which had description of Sri Aurobindo in the physical, and they were walking together, and then she wakes up. And the slipper, something, yeah. She finds yeah, his slipper. She gives even a description of that whole. By the way, I had also the visions of that whole and she had been sitting. Most of her are saying this already long ago before I started my kind of journey towards this. And he was there, like on the, on the throne, like the king, and there were columns on the side, you know, and you have to approach. and I, approached him and I put my hand on his knees and started to weeping. I never weeped in my life like this, you know, non-stop. And then he turned on to me and, and gave me the, this, you have to take care of, like understood. And this was the white diamond like this in his hand. Oh, wow. like unbelievable beauty. Yeah. I took that diamond and I just went through those columns. And then I thought, wow, this, and he told me to take care of it. And I felt immediately all the forces who wanted to possess the diamond. Yeah. And then I hid it in some, some place. And I woke up. And then I thought, whoa, what, what, what should I do? And then I fell asleep again. And then I was again in the same place where I hid the diamond. <laughs> so what is that diamond? We do not know. Maybe it's just a symbol of my thinking about. Uh, but it was so real, more real than all the reality I lived in my life. <laughs> Maybe it was your swabhava or swadhar, no swadharma. I was uh, assigning it to actually this Vedic and Sanskrit studies, yeah, more. It was like a something here. Why should I be so interested in this, you know? Totally taken by it. Mm. Mm. I'm totally at home here. I would go and go without end into it. You know? mm. So there is no tiredness, there is no disinterestedness, mm. there is constant balanced ex kind of inspiration from it yeah, something like and that. we feel that we feel that in your class mm -hmm. yeah it just comes out so naturally that you know my sister and i we were talking that you're almost like a rishi explaining the vedas to us it feels that way yeah, so true well. so true yeah, yeah. it is just like that Yes, yes, very true. Is very obvious to us. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yes. Shubhendra. It's his grace. It's his gift to all of us, you know. So, who else would do it with the Veda? And maybe that white diamond is la grass. Could be. Huh? That would be lovely if la grass would grow into that center of study and in transformation, not only study, but transformation by study. It is. It is growing. Yeah, yeah you're impacting so many lives. Yeah. Through Lagras. Yes, interestingly, it happens, yes. We have more and more people. There are more than 5,000 people already on our mm -hmm. list. It's a, well, it's a lot for for for... Sri Aurobindo's circle. Yeah? Yes. Is a lot. Yes, it is. Because Sri Aurobindo is not so popular. In... Yes. Now he's yeah. becoming. Now he's we becoming. Are, we are, Vladimir, we are going to cling to you. Exactly. <laughs> cling is the word. Wherever yes. you go, we are going to follow. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the Vedas through you. Well, uh, the Vedas have their own weight yeah, and their own luminosity. I'm here only just uh, the finger pointing to the moon, so to say. That is enough for us. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That is enough. Yeah. 
I'm glad. All right, I will close with the mantra. Thank you for your encouragement and your nice words. Thank you for sharing you. your yeah. beautiful story. That's Thank really you for cool. sharing. Yes, very true. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet Om shanti 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 Shri Guru Vyanamaha Hari Om Thank you. Thank you.